Um, in this video I'm going to show you how you can make this um, personalized um, Greek pattern earring with a heart around it uh, using Fluid Designer for 3D printing. So we're going to uh, personalize it in this case with a Harrington font letter A but we can use any other character and lots of other fonts. And we're going to use this uh, Greek symbol here inside the heart as shown. So we're going to use Fluid Designer for 3D printing. First thing is in the 3D templates folder we're going to um, use this wire connector with a one and a half millimeter internal diameter hole that's for the fish hook to go through um, i'm going to use a harrington font and uh, i'm going to use this letter a here um, i'm also going to use um, greek patterns and we've got to be careful with these first few greek patterns here they work quite differently from most of the objects that we use in fluid design for 3d printing so I'm going to use this classical Greek curve pattern 001D and we're going to put all of those inside a heart shape. So if I go to patterns hearts, so there's a, a range of patterns I could choose from, um, I'm going to use 005. So if I just drag and drop that onto the workspace. Um, now this object is a parametric smart object. It's one by two cross section, so one millimeter by two millimeters deep. Um, we could make it thicker, uh, but that will put too much weight on for an earring. So ideally what you want to do is to set it down to one millimeter by one millimeter deep. That's the best thing for earrings. So if we, uh, I'm just going to switch on screencast keys. So any key presses I make should be displayed down here. Um, so what do I want to add it to this? Well, um, if I click on uh, group library, um, I'm going to... Um, add a Harrington font, this letter A here, and we do it by appending, not by dragging and dropping. So we go to File and Append, and uh, just go up through the menu system until you get to the Groups folder, that's where all the patterns are. And I want um, Alphabet Harrington font, and I want Harrington font A. I want the object, and so I highlight Harrington font A object and append it from the library. Um, now I could just pull that down to there. Um, I could scale this down, make it a bit smaller. So if I press S on the keyboard, I can scale it down. Now whenever you're scaling Fluid Designer, you must always do Control A and apply the scale. And watch the thickness will reset when you do that. If you don't apply the scale, this, this value here, one millimeter by two millimeters in this case, won't be right. Now remember, we've changed the uh, cross section of the heart to one by one. So if I hold, highlight the letter A, and if I hold down the shift key and highlight the letter the heart and join them together, notice that the A takes on the same cross section as the heart, one by one. And that's what I want. <coughs> now I'm going to uh, add the connector at the top here next, and that's in this folder here, templates connectors. So it's a wire connector with a one and a half millimeter diameter hole. So I go to file and append. Just go up through the menu system until you get to groups folder. And uh, the connector we want is in 3D templates connectors. And it's a wire connector with a one and a half millimeter diameter hole. And uh, we just append that from the library. And just uh, if I just scroll the center mouse button, I can zoom in. And I can just position that there now. And you can always double check it with wireframe mode. It's right in the middle and um, again um, the cross section of this at the moment is rounded one millimeter it's not a square cross section like the heart but if I highlight this first hold down the shift key and highlight the heart shape last and then join them this will take on the same appearance as the heart which is what I want so they're all smart objects I could if I really wanted to make them thicker again um, I don't want to do that. I want to keep them thin because we're making an earring here. And um, so what I want to do now is to uh, go to the um, Greek pattern folder. So here's the Greek pattern folder. And I think it was D that I was going to use. So it's this one here. So it's a classical Greek curve pattern 001D. Now, if you look in this folder, the first half a dozen or so items are all very square they're not rounded 
The rest of these are actually parametric smart objects, these Greek curves, but the first half a dozen aren't, including the one we're going to use. So if I go to File and Append, just go up through the menu system to the Groups folder. Um, we're doing uh, Greek patterns, so it's Patterns Greek. I want 001D, I want the object, and I want to append that from the library. Now, this might look like all the other objects we use in Fluid Designer, but it is a little bit different. It's still a curve, and we can change the bevel object over here to 1 by 1, 1 by 2, 1 by 4, etc. But this is a slightly different sort of curve to this one. So don't join them together. And don't scale this one. If you do scale this, you can't do Control A and apply the scale in the way you normally can do in Fluid Designer. Because this is a Bezier curve. These are NURBS curves, smooth, rounded ones. This is a Bezier curve. Now, in this instance, I want these square edges as part of this Greek style pattern. You, it's not easy to get square edges with NURBS curves. Cur NURBS curves tend to be more rounded. It is possible, but the um, face size will go very, very high indeed. So these objects, just these half a dozen objects here in the Greek patterns, are Bezier curves. So what you must do, set the thickness to one by one there, which is the same thickness <coughs> as the rest of this ring. Position it where you want it. Say so don't scale it in this instance, otherwise the cross section won't be as displayed over here. So when it comes to joining these objects together, you need to change this object to a mesh. We don't normally do that in Fluid Designer. Usually when you export it as an OBJ file, it converts it to the mesh for you. Uh, but here we need to convert it to a mesh. The heart shape, also convert that to a mesh. Highlight uh, the pattern there. Notice it, yeah, highlight the pattern there. And let's just double check this. It's actually a little bit thicker look than what I want. Um, it is 1.4 millimeters thickness there, so I do need to actually change it to 1.0 thickness. Okay. And let me just go to view and top view. Just zoom in and uh, just using the ruler, I'm just going to check this thickness here yeah that's still at one so you do need to be very careful even i've had to be careful with this it left it as 1.4 millimeters deep not the value i set over here so be careful with this object now hold down the shift key i like the heart on the outside and join the two meshes together so you have to be careful with this object once you've done that um, go to File and Export. I usually use Wavefront OBJ format. Export it uh, to the desktop and I saved it as a personalised Greek pattern heart hearing. So I'm going to export that to the desktop there. And then you must always go to, uh, to Netfab Basic and uh, import this into Netfab Basic. So if we uh, switch across to Netfab Basic, I've imported it into Netfab Basic. You see you've got a warning red triangle. Well, that's all right. Just run the repair procedure. So we'll click on the plus and some holes and some border edges. But uh, we get that all the time with Fluid Designer. It's not a problem. You see they've all reset to zero there. So apply the repair and remove the old part. So it's just automatic repair. And then go to Part, Export Part. I like to save it as a Wavefront object. Personalized Greek pattern earring. And uh, if you get another error message here, manifold edges, just click optimize and wait for the tick, which you normally get, and export it. And so that's the file that you'd upload to Shapeways or send to your slice or whatever you want to do. So that's how easy it is, but you do need to be careful with these Greek objects, the square ones. The rest of the ones in the Greek folder are parametric smart objects, the square ones aren't.